to uh, Hello and uh, welcome once again to the Bright Network studio. I'm here with the wonderful Jeannie Whitehouse um, to really discuss um, essentially what she's going to be talking about tomorrow on stage, which is the, the, the challenges that uh, our clients or her clients are having with uh, automation and developing better relationships with their clients. So Jeannie, yes, lovely to see you. It's great to see you, Andy. What are you going to be talking about tomorrow? So I'm going to be talking about what I think is the big issue that we're facing right now, which is we have all this automation, and it helps us. We're more efficient, right? We can automate a whole bunch of stuff. We can get a lot more data shoved into our applications. We can set up 25 different applications. But the problem is making sense of all that data and pulling all of it together and then helping our clients do something with it. And I think we tend to get all automated and happy about reconciling it and getting in all these systems, but we're not thinking about what matters to our clients. And that's where I think we need to... Yeah, I think, I, I think one of the most interesting things that I've heard you talk about, and, and I know you, you, you've written a great deal about, is about how automation tends to, to encourage firms to focus much more on their internal processes Duh. and forget about their clients. Navel-gazing. Navel-gazing. Navel <laughs> tell me some of the examples you've seen of this. Well, I mean, we, we focus on efficiency, right? We want to bill faster. We want to have proposals automated. We want to have um, more applications to feed the invoices into our accounting system so it's easier on us. I mean, we used to automate the chart of accounts, line it up so that we could pull it into our systems easier. We used to design systems around what worked for us. And we don't think about the managerial requirements on the client side. And so what we end up with is great, efficient stuff but it still isn't meaningful to our clients. It doesn't help them decide what to do differently tomorrow. And that's where the opportunity is. And that requires different skills for us accountants. And many of us don't have those skills. So what do you do if you're, you're an accountant? Or, so say I'm an accountant. You just give up, Andy. Just give up. <laughs> Go I think you're probably else. right. <laughs> Go raise Basset Hounds. That's my strategy. <laughs> well, what, what do you say to me? I, I, I you feel have like to you... get new skills. You have to seek out new ways to do things and you have to talk to your clients and ask them what's really going on. What's going on? What are you struggling with? What are your biggest challenges? What are your system challenges on your side and where is the data that matters the most to you? And what we find out is it's not the data that ends up in our accounting software, which we think is the do all end all. It's all those operational systems that are feeding data in that has the real story and we're not helping them figure mm. that out. And I think one of the challenges that a lot, a lot of firms have is that they can't get past that notion of this is just about the, the numbers. The financial state, because data. we care about that. Absolutely. There's this gap, and yay, we like gap. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. <laughs> you need to do... And our clients could care less. It's like, what do I do to make sure I can pay the bills tomorrow? To, is is it a I simple mean? message just to say you've got to stop being an accountant and start being a business partner? It sounds good. It's a nice little tagline that you could say, but when you sit down to it, and we are trained to do certain things. We've done it for so many years, especially those of us who are older. <laughs> we, have, we have developed routines that we are very comfortable with. They've worked. People are still paying us to do the same stuff, and it requires a big shift, both mentally and in terms of the skills. And look at who comes to conferences, guys. I mean, there are how many? 3,000? 4,000, 5,000, let's say, at all the conferences that are talking about technology. How many accountants are there out there? A million, if you add the bookkeepers yeah. and the CPAs. Where are the rest of them? Where's the rest? They're sitting in their offices doing what they did yesterday. Yeah. And the clients are going to people that don't have the skills that we had for help. They're uh, finding other sources. And I think one of the challenges that, that I'm you know, hearing a lot is those guys that aren't transitioning their firms, yeah. that are remaining very much at the you might say the bottom of the pyramid, very traditional in nature, yeah. um, are hanging on. They may be thinking they're going to outlive this. They're going to get past this and retire. Yeah, it's a great strategy. Hold on till you die. Hold right? on till you die. And what are you going <laughs> to do when you're... Well, and you, those are the firms that are trying to get merged into other firms, and the, the acquirers aren't looking for that kind of firm. Mm. They don't want to bring in somebody else's dead practice. They're looking for people who are innovating and automating and doing things a different way. But... I think even those, even those of us who are heavily involved in the new stuff, the automation, are still missing the boat. We're still so focused on automation. I mean, there's a new, new tool every week. So we're trying to get the best thing in there and the shiny new object in there. Meanwhile, the customer's not seeing any benefit. The client isn't seeing an impact on their business. We're still not explaining what happens when we're finished with all the balancing and reporting. Yeah. So we still got to automate yes, free up the time, and then use that time in a different way to add more value. 
Well, I know you know your book and or your books and and, and no, um, just one. <laughs> the content that you've written on on on, on accounting. Then some white papers. Yes. Really goes towards helping yeah. people understand that. But what would be if you could digest this into kind of your 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 top two, top three golden rules, the Genie White House golden rules. What would they be? The main thing is to start with the customer, the client. We call them customers in our firm, which drives me crazy because every other accountant says client. And so we're <laughs> supposed to say customer, so I get all tripped up. But start with the people that we're trying to help. Sit with them and find out what it is that matters to them. And don't just check in at the end of the year and send them a list of, you need to send me all this stuff so I can do my job. If you're doing bookkeeping, you should be connected more proactively, but start asking about what else goes on besides whatever I'm ticking and tying. What's happening in your point of sale systems? Let me see that. Let me look at the source data and see what's happening with the procedures and the training and the people around that data, and let's see if there's something we can do to make the whole thing work better. What we find in my practice and in the CPA firm that I spend some time in is communication challenges inside companies tend to be sort of at the root of many of the problems. And the technology can be leveraged to help that communication. But we're not even getting to that point. We're just automating the transaction flow and not all the important people stuff that goes on around it. So I think there's a big opportunity. So don't be afraid to step outside to step, of the number. Go outside your little office, put down your tin key and your mouse, and go talk to somebody yeah. and say, what are you struggling with? What are you seeing in your industry? What are your customers looking for? And how are you... At, you know, I, I think modifying it, it comes from what that. they need. If you, those conversations, that's where those opportunities to help and, come from. And that's what we're most afraid of. Yeah. We're more happy with something that we can control back in the office. We understand that. There's you know, no surprises are going to arise. It's going to two plus two is always going to equal four. And that customer stuff, we might get ourselves in a position where we don't have all the answers. And so we avoid asking the questions. And that requires confidence. And if you personally don't have that confidence... You need to you find get, out you need how to, to find, get it. You need, you need to find to, people. You need to get training. You need to find peers. You need to network. But you've got to start practicing, just like any other skill that you want to acquire. Yeah. It takes practice and investment to get better at it. And so having those conversations and being comfortable enough with what you know to bridge a new subject with somebody is, is the key. I and I don't think as accountants that's, we're wired naturally that way. So we talk about accountants being, you know, still being relevant. Uh, in, in a world full of automation, but accountants are highly relevant. But what makes them uniquely qualified to answer these questions? Well, I think we're, we're uniquely qualified to ask different questions. And I think as accountants, that is a skill that we are born with. You think about the inquiry that's part of our job. We're always looking beyond what's on the paper. So I think we have unique inquisition skills, <laughs> which doesn't sound good, but inquiry skills that we come by natively. And I think we also have this independence view and an ethical perspective. Mm -hmm. So we can look at things without emotion. We can step back and see the bigger picture when we will take the time to do so. And then we can provide perspective across multiple clients. And there's always a benefit in that. So if you're inside a company, for example, you only see one set of information. And when we're working with multiple clients, we can, make, uh, we can see patterns across those clients and learn from that. So I think it's a big opportunity for us. Jeannie, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I've been Andy North in conversation with the great Jeannie Whitehouse in the Right Network studio. Thank you.